Chapter 16, Preparing the Last Day Crisis and Disasters. These last day conditions press us to prepare. We are living in the time of the end. The fast, fulfilling signs of the times declare that the coming of Christ is near at hand. The days in which we live are solemn and important. The Spirit of God is gradually but surely being withdrawn from the earth. Plagues and judgments are already falling upon the despisers of the grace of God. The calamities by land and sea, the unsettled state of society, the alarms of war are portentous. They forecast approaching events of the greatest magnitude. The agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating. They are strengthening for the last great crisis. Great changes are soon to take place in our world, and the final movements will be rapid ones. The condition of things in the world shows that troublous times are right upon us. The daily papers are full of indications of a terrible conflict in the near future. Bold robberies are of frequent occurrence. Strikes are common. Thefts and murders are committed on every hand. Men possessed of demons are taking the lives of men and women and little children. Men have become infatuated with vice, and every species of evil prevails. Testimonies, Volume 9, page 11. Something decisive about to take place. The present is a time of overwhelming interest to all living. Rulers and statesmen, men who occupy positions of trust and authority, thinking men and women of all classes, have their attention fixed upon the events taking place about us. They are watching the strained, restless relations that exist among the nations. They observe the intensity that is taking possession of every earthly element and they recognize that something great and decisive is about to take place, that the world is on the verge of a stupendous crisis. Angels are now restraining the winds of strife, that they may not blow until the world shall be warned of its coming doom. But a storm is gathering, ready to burst upon the earth, and when God shall bid his angels loose the winds, there will be such a scene of strife as no pen can picture. Education pages 179 and 180. The time is at hand when there will be sorrow in the world that no human bomb can heal. The Spirit of God is being withdrawn. Disasters by sea and by land follow one another in quick cessation. How frequently we hear of earthquakes and tornadoes, of destruction by fire and flood, with great loss of life and property. Apparently these calamities are capricious outbreaks of disorganized, unregulated forces of nature, wholly beyond the control of man. But in them all, God's purposes may be read. They are among the agencies by which he seeks to arouse men and women to a sense of their danger. Prophets and Kings, page 277. Large cities will be swept away. The work that should long ago have been in active operation to win souls to Christ has not been done. The inhabitants of the ungodly cities, so soon to be visited by calamities, have been cruelly neglected. The time is near when large cities will be swept away, and all should be warned of these coming judgments. But who is giving to the accomplishment of this work the wholehearted service that God requires? At the present time there is not a thousandth part being done in working the cities that should be done, and that would be done if men and women would do their whole duty. Manuscript 53, 1910. Oh, that God's people had a sense of the impending destruction of thousands of cities, now almost given to idolatry. Review and Herald, September 10, 1903. Impending Disasters. Not long ago a very impressive scene passed before me. I saw an immense ball of fire falling among some beautiful mansions, causing their instant destruction. I heard someone say, We knew that the judgments of God were coming upon the earth, but we did not know that they would come so soon. Others said, You knew? Why then did you not tell us? We did not know. On every side I heard such words spoken. Soon grievous troubles will arise among the nations trouble that will not cease until Jesus comes. As never before, we need to press together, 
serving him who has prepared his throne in the heavens and whose kingdom ruleth over all. God has not forsaken his people, and our strength lies in not forsaking him. The judgments of God are in the land, the wars and rumors of wars, the destruction by fire and flood, so clearly that the time of trouble, which is to increase until the end, is very near at hand. We have no time to lose. The world is stirred with the spirit of war. The prophecies of the 11th of Daniel have almost reached their final fulfillment. Review and Herald, November 24, 1904. Indescribable. Last Friday morning, just before I awoke, a very impressive scene was presented before me. I seemed to awake from sleep, but was not in my home. From the windows I could behold a terrible conflagration. Great balls of fire were falling upon houses, and from these balls fiery arrows were flying in every direction. It was impossible to check the fires that were kindled, and many places were being destroyed. The terror of the people was indescribable. After a time I awoke and found myself at home. Letter 278, 196 Prepare while there is an opportunity. As religious aggression subverts the liberties of our nation, those who would stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unfavorable positions. For their own sake they should, while they have opportunity, become intelligent in regard to disease, its causes, prevention, and cure. Those who do this will find a field of labor anywhere. There will be suffering ones, plenty of them who will need help, not only among those of our own faith, but largely among those who know not the truth. Medical Missionary, November, December, 1892. Ready to give immediate assistance. Poverty and distress in families will come to our knowledge, and afflicted and suffering ones will have to be relieved. We know very little of the human suffering that exists everywhere about us, but as we have opportunity, we should be ready to render immediate assistance to those who are under a severe pressure. Manuscript 25, 1894. God's Helping Hand in Lessening Suffering The work of health reform is the Lord's means for lessening suffering in our world and for purifying His Church. Teach the people that they can act as God's helping hand by cooperating with the Master Worker in restoring physical and spiritual health. Testimonies, Volume 9, pages 1, 12, and 13. Every member to take hold of medical missionary work. We have come to a time when every member of the church should take hold of medical missionary work. The world is a laser house filled with victims of both physical and spiritual disease. Everywhere people are perishing for lack of a knowledge of the truths that have been committed to us. The members of the church are in need of an awakening that they may realize their responsibility to impart these truths. Testimonies, Volume 7, page 62. A door of entrance to the large cities. Henceforth, medical missionary work is to be carried forward with an earnestness with which it has never yet been carried. This work is the door through which the truth is to find entrance to the large cities. Testimonies, Volume 9, page 167. Every city is to be entered by workers trained to do medical missionary work. Testimonies, Volume 7, page 59. In every large city there should be a corps of organized, well-disciplined workers. Not merely one or two, but scores should be set to work. Letter 34, 1892. A part of the work of every church. Medical missionary work should have its representatives in every place in connection with the establishment of our churches. Manuscript 88, 1902. In every city where we have a church, there is need of a place where treatments can be given. Among the homes of our church members, there are few that afford room and facilities for the proper care of the sick. A place should be provided where treatment may be given for common ailments. The building might be inelegant and even rude, but it should be furnished with facilities for giving simple treatments. Testimonies, Volume 6, page 113. 
The medical missionary work should be a part of the work of every church in our land. Disconnected from the church, it would soon become a strange medley of disorganized atoms. It would consume, but not produce. Instead of acting as God's helping hand to forward his truth, it would sap the life and force from the church and weaken the message. Conducted independently, it would not only consume talent and means needed in other lines, but in the very work of helping the helpless, apart from the ministry of the word, it would place men where they would scoff at Bible truths. Testimonies, Volume 6, page 289. Medical Missionary Ministry in the Closing Crisis My heart is made sad as I look at our churches, which ought to be conducted, connected in heart and soul and practice with the medical missionary work. I wish to tell you that soon there will be no work done in ministerial line, but medical missionary work. The work of a minister is to minister. Our ministers are to work on the gospel plan of ministering. You will never be ministers after the gospel order till you show a decided interest in medical missionary work, the gospel of healing and blessing and strengthening. Come up to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty powers of darkness, that it be not said of you, Curse ye, morose, curse ye bitterly the inhabitants thereof, because they came not out to the help of the Lord. Judges 5.23 General Conference Bulletin, April 12, 1901.